Hey guys, we're ready for part two of the paw purse crochet along. This support video is going to go over the finishing touch at the top, which allows your two layers of mesh to be actually locked together. And we will go over the straps and the optional button closure. My daughter has already filled her bag to capacity. It is nicely stretched out. So just something to maybe look at is how stretchy it looks compared to the last video when it was not pre-stretched. <laughs> I have finished the body of my bag. It's nice, looks good on both sides, but this part here is not locked together. It's only gets locked once the stitches change colors there. So in order to keep my bag actually locked together on the top, I'm just gonna do a round of half double crochet on the top. You could do single crochet if you prefer. I like the half double because it makes it um, feel more finished. Yarn over and we are going to be putting one stitch into every spot. So we'll use the window and we'll use the top of the double crochets on the main color layer. It'll be window, top of the double, window, top of the double, all the way across. But we're also going to be locking it to the accent color layer. So the first one, whenever you have a window for the main color, you'll have a double crochet for the accent color. And I go through the V, just like normal. That's the spot we'll use. And then when you're doing this, because you could go through the window and through the double crochet. I don't like it the way it covers up the white so much. So when I have the gap space on the front layer only, only on this contrasting color, I just take the back loop and then I go through the double crochet. When I'm doing the double crochet of this white, because this blue is actually in the back and it's being covered by blue, it's fine to go through the window. But when I'm using it on the front, I'm going through the back, back loop. So we will go over it. Those are just my explanation before we get started. You can chain one because it'll bring you up just a little bit and it locks this final join together. That part's optional. If you think it looks weird, you don't have to do it. Yarn over because we're going to do a half double. So the first stitch is the top of the double crochet on the accent color and then go through the whole window of the main color. Yarn over, bring it in, or I guess they call it a bring up a loop and then go through all the stitches. So it's like a nice thick spot. So now we're going to yarn over again. And this time, because it's like a window spot, but we're actually going to use the back loop of the chain between the double crochets. And it is a bit fiddly, but this is your finishing touch, right? So, and then we're going through the two loops at the back for the double crochet, top of the double crochet, back loop only of the front chain. So pulling up a loop and then yarn over and pull through all of them. Yarn over. Now we're going to do double crochet and window. Yarn over, we're going to use back loop only and top of the double crochet. Double crochet and window. Um, sometimes because I'm so used to doing double crochets, it is tricky to switch to half doubles because muscle memory, I guess. So it does require some thinking, which is lame. Sometimes I want my crochet to be not thinking. I'm going to go through, bring it through all of them. Yarn over. Now we're in double crochet and window. Yarn over. We're going to use back loop and double crochet. And we're just going to go all the way around just like so. If you have a different way that you would like to do it, you can. We'll see how it looks in just a second. So we're almost done going around the top. We just have one more stitch. It feels a bit tricky because this is where the white one had been joined and the blue one as well. So here's my big professional tip, wing it. It's okay that this stitch looks slightly different because it is different, okay? So I'm grabbing something and I'm going through the last stitch that I did on the blue was this one so now I have to go through the window and then this white one it doesn't have anything locking it so I'm gonna grab the back loop grab the back loop and go through a stitch 
but again the blue one is kind of weird too so it's tricky because that spot is different so I'm just warning you that it is different and it's okay for things to be tricky ah, I forgot to yarn over ah poo okay there we go and you do your half double so now it's time to join and what we're going to do is cut this off and we're going to pull it through and we haven't joined yet you can see so that's okay this I think is called usually an invisible join and we're going to take this yarn it, it comes up through here and we're going to go through the stitch that we are going to join through and then we come back and go into the hole where it was coming out of and that makes the top of it look oops come on you then it just looks like the little V loops all the way across the top. So that's a nice way to join things. It's not really necessary when you're adding a strap. The strap is gonna be right here. You don't need it to look pretty, but I like the function of it. It helps me get the Tunisian stitch into all the right spots, and then I don't have weird bumps. I just think it looks nicer. So I'm weaving this little end in here. So now we just got a sack. It's a nice sack, but it needs a strap. So I'm going to use the blue. You could use whatever color you like, but I think blue won't get as messy. You're gonna find your side. Make sure that it's lined up if you've joined your bottom. You wanna make sure that it's all lined up because otherwise your bag will be twisty. So that'll be your middle. And I'm gonna do like five, four, three, two, one. For my strap, I'm going to do a Tunisian knit stitch. I left my cut end long enough for an excessive weave in at the end because I want my strap super secure for my kids. To start it, we're just gonna pick up five loops. So we're gonna go through that hole. And this, this tail is kind of gonna fall apart if we don't hold on to it. So I'm just gonna put it here so I can grab it with my thumb. Two, three, four, Oops, that kind of went through the wrong spot. I like go through the actual two stitches at the top. I had gone through the gap, which is fine. It's not the worst, but... And five. Okay, so now that I have my five stitches, you can see this, this one here, it can get very loose because it's the one I'm holding. So I want to make sure that I hold it tight enough. And in order to come back for your return pass, you go through one on this side, and then every other time you're going to go through two one two three four so four times through two the first one was just one this loop that's on your hook counts as the first stitch in this next row if you look at the next stitch this is the front vertical bar and we're going to do tunisian knit stitch so we want our hook to come out the back if you look closely here you can see the front and back vertical bars and the chain stitches above us that's where our hook is going to go to do the tunisian knit stitch we do five stitches across. However, our last stitch, the final stitch here, we want to keep the V, upside down V, on the side, on the outer edge. So we go under two loops, the front loop and the back loop. And then we bring up our loop as normal. So now we've got one, two, three, four, five stitches on our hook. Return pass goes through one, then it goes through two, 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 and two. And we're going to do this until you get to your strap as long as you want it. So keep going, the front bar to the back, pull it up a loop, into the front bar, pull it up. And then on the end, if you look on the side, there's two loops, we're going to both. Okay, so do that for however long you need to do it until you have the strap as long as you want it. And I'll show you how to Join it off. This tail here, I'm gonna weave it in so that it doesn't keep coming loose. I have made my strap as long as I want it. I measured it on my daughter to see if she liked it. So that's why I just sort of placed that there and she said, yep, that's the length she wants. So we're ready to join it. When it comes to joining it, I have tried before to like do it seamlessly and attach it while I'm going through here. And I just don't like the look as much as when I simply sew it. So you're free to do some other method of attaching, but I prefer sewing. 
Tunisian crochet usually finishes with a bind off stitch. But it doesn't really matter in this case because we're sewing it onto here. So I don't bother with the finishing off line. Make sure that your strap is not twisted because that would not be pleasant. Make sure you're finding the right stitch to join into. You can use your stitch markers if you think you're going to forget which stitch it was. And when joining, I like to fold them like this so that if you're familiar with sewing, you always put the right sides together because then when it flops up, it looks nicer. Make sure we are lined up with that window. So that's the middle. I put it here. And now we just go through this stitch. I have five stitch wide straps, so I'm going to go through five stitches. And I think it's called a whip stitch once again. I don't do anything too fancy, mostly because I get impatient when the bag is nearly done. I'm like, yeah, let's get it done. I want to just be done. But I do try to make sure that these finishing touches are still nice because they can kind of make or break the final piece. You put all that effort into it and it's got a cool design and it's got a little paw and it's so cute and it's a bag. And then you mess up on those finishing touches and people go, ooh, that handmade bag looks like crappy handmade. And it is possible for handmade to look nice. We don't have to make it look yucky. I think that's one of my, I guess, pet peeves. So... The sides, I like to make sure that the sides are not going to have that uh, gap looking thing. So I just make sure that that is secure. And this is holding your bag together. I'm not sure how heavy your bag is going to get, but I know my kids are definitely going to overflow the bag. So I like to go back and just do a few extra back and forth. It's definitely overkill, <laughs> but I have the yarn and I'd rather make it good. There she is nice bag we are technically done the bag now but this gap here if you find that it's a little bit too much gapping you can put a button on one side and a chain on the other side and we'll just have a small little closure so this is the button my daughter picked from our stash um, I'm gonna leave a bit of a tail so that I can tie it off um, afterwards so I'm going to do my slip knot and I'm going to chain a few. It depends on how big your button is. So if you are going to come around here, you want your loop to go under this spot, right? So if I'm adding this here, probably right along this white line. So I want my loop to be able to come across from the back and be basically lying under here but I want it long enough to get to the back so it depends on the size of your button as to how many of these you do it's going to be joined onto the back here um, it's probably going to be centered better than this it's just a, a guess right now so if I had it on there and had a little flap it would go under here I think that it might be one or two stitches too big I'm gonna just take one out so It'll be attached to here and when it comes it needs to be big enough that it goes over the button but then it kind of it'll snug up here under this spot so I think that's enough plus you'll have stuff in your bag that's the whole point is that it has to hold the bag closed so I think that'll be enough and then we can cut the yarn and I'm gonna pull my last stitch all the way through tighten it up and now what I have is, come on, get out of the way. We're going to go over here. We're going to find the middle spot. This you can, you can estimate or you can count. So I have white and white here. So I'm going to go one, two, three, eight, nine. So this white line that goes right above that, basically the middle of the paw, that's where I want to join these. And I'm going to pull them through here on one side and through here on the other side. I'm going to make a knot. Well, I don't know if it counts as a knot. I'm just crossing it over once. 
You can't pull too tight because your loops will come right back through. So I'm just going to make it some and then I'm going to pull the ends back through. You could use your needle for this. I just find the hook is much quicker. Make one little tie it over and then bring it back through once more. And this time, after I cross it over, I am also going to use my needle and I'm going to weave in those ends. So that is secure for me. So that's the loop. Now we're going to put it over here. We want to find that middle again. Remember on this side, the middle was these two dots was right on here. So that's the same on this side. The middle, the middle is here. I'm going to put my button there with the bumpy side out. And I don't know if you know this trick. I cut some of my yarn and I'm just going to pull it apart to get thread because I don't actually have thread that matches this. And I'm going to go through here into this spot here somewhere and rope. Here we go. And this one as well. Go through here, basically the same spot. So I'm going to make it so that one end is short and one end is long. I'm going to make a knot and another knot. I didn't take it off my needle because I was hoping not to have to thread it again, but look at me struggle here. So this end, I'm going to weave it in. Now it sucks because I've used blue yarn to match. I thought it'd be kind of nice to have that pop of color. But now I have to somehow get this blue yarn through the white and up into the blue area in order to properly weave in those ends back and forth. So there we go. We will put it up here. It fell out of my needle. I'm going to have to thread it again. How often do you have to thread your needle when you do this sort of thing? Am I just bad at this or what? It's not my favorite job. Just because I know how to sew on a button doesn't mean I really love it. But I do think it'll be a nice addition to the bag. And my daughter wants it. And that's what moms do, right? So we'll just put that side in. And now I'm going to work with this one. So this one, I'm going to come back to the front. I'm going through the buttonhole. And I'm going to go through the buttonhole, I don't know, two or three times. Two is nice, three is better maybe, hey? Come on, find the hole. Here we go. And the final step of button sewing. I'm going to go back over this side, but this time I'm not going to go through a hole. I want to try to keep it where my yarn is coming out, but this time I'm going to go around and around. One, two, three. I don't know how many times. I think it doesn't really matter. It just makes your thread and go back this side and that's it the button is on we're gonna make a knot we're gonna weave it in there we go so now I have a cute little button with the little blue in it because that was cute and then this one can go around it when your bag is full it'll hold it closed thanks for coming on this journey with me I hope you enjoy the paw purse and don't forget to like and subscribe to my YouTube channel I'll hopefully get more videos and tips and tricks up for you guys thanks for coming here bye